the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God.
the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. I welcome you to the house of God this morning. Hope you are all doing well. Hope you are doing well. Let's come and welcome ourselves into the house of God this morning. With a warm walk, each and every one of us, welcome your neighbor into the house of God. Praise and worship together. 
11, I just want to thank God because God answers prayers. Like, He really answers prayer. And I don't know about you, for if you were here yesterday night, I felt the mighty power of God here in this auditorium yesterday. And I really want to bless God for each and every one of us that we're able to make it here. If you are hearing for story, sorry for you. God bless you in Jesus' name.
for being here. We praise the Lord for what he's doing in Africa and from Africa. And I see some people from Asia and I add that as well. Now, my wife and I, we are Africans. parts of the world, different parts of Africa, and also to India. <clears throat> and uh, last night I remarked that, um, Lord willing, the plans are that we will go to India end of June uh, to do some training of pastors in July. My wife is always better with the dates than I am. In July, we will go to do some training in a part of India. Um, this is one of the privileges of being part of the body of Christ, to be able to meet so many people from so many different places in the world. But today is special for us because of you. Because of you. Last night, we came in here, and I saw the people on the stage, and I realized, yes, this is true. This is people from Africa. I feel so much at home. And I missed so many people. People in the village where we had been ministering. Uh, our, our own youngest son, who is, uh, looks like you do, we adopted him. Um, uh, the people that became our dear brothers and sisters and colleagues in other parts of Africa, Nigeria, um, Senegal, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, some others as well. <clears throat> and we felt at home. And I wondered, well, we left at about, when was it, half past eight? Half past nine? And we heard that you went on until late night, right? And this morning I saw you were still alive and full of energy. Yes, because you are filled with the joy of the Lord himself. So, dear friends, thank you for the privilege of being with you this morning. We are the blessed ones. Now, I would like to share something with you from the Gospel of Matthew. So those of you who have Bibles can open your Bible, uh, first of all, at Matthew chapter 4. But I heard that many of you are university students. So that means you are not afraid to hear information. So I will give you some information. So I will just preach about the whole book, from the beginning to the end. <laughs> uh, but I will not preach on every verse. I will, I will share some of what the Lord has put on my heart uh, with you today. And the question that I would like to start with before we even look at Scripture is this. How much would you like to be like Jesus? How much would you like to be like Jesus? That's the question. Now, if you look at the Gospel of Matthew, the first few chapters is sort of an introduction. How did it come about that Jesus was born? How, what happened when he was small? What happened before his ministry started? Right, that is the first few chapters. And then in chapter 4, the real story starts. And it goes on right 
to chapter 28. And the theme is, first of all, just one theme. Just one theme. We get that in chapter 4, verse 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. Now, what did he preach? Here we have it. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And in the end, when you, if you would turn to, pay, to uh, chapter 28, you understand, you will remember that Jesus said, all power has been given to me. Now what is that? That's kingdom language. That's the king speaking. The king saying, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. So he begins his ministry announcing the kingdom is here. And at the end of his ministry, when he sends out his disciples, he speaks kingdom language. The kingdom is breaking through. Now, this is just like if you have a bookcase with books in it, right? Here on the one side, you've got a book. It keeps the others upright. And here on the other side, you've got a book. It keeps the others upright. These are the two book uprights. Keeps the others upright. The kingdom of God. And that's not my message for today. But to be able to understand what it means to be a true disciple of Jesus and to become more and more like him, it is important to understand this. Because the first passion that Jesus had in his ministry was the message of the kingdom. And how Jesus understood the gospel when he was preaching and teaching in Galilee was the king is here. The kingdom is breaking through and nothing is going to be the same ever. Nothing is going to be the same. Because the king is here. Everything will change. That's what it's all about. And if we read uh, on in chapter 4, we will see exactly the same theme come about. We'll get to that in a few moments. So that's the one thing. Jesus comes as king and he establishes God's rule, his power, his might. And now the question comes, how would the world be like if God is king? The world where you live. Where you go to class if you are a student, where you go to work if you are working, where you live, your relationships with people around you. If you walk down the street and you look and you see, you look at the city, how would it look like if everything happened according to God's plan and desire? Because that is what the kingdom is all about. That it will be here as it is in heaven. Because that is what we pray, isn't it? That it will be here as it is in heaven. That's the kingdom. And now Jesus came and he said, everything is going to change. Nothing is going to be the same anymore. Because... The king is here. Thank you. I will need that after a while. Thank you. Now, I would like you to understand how dark the night was. How dark the situation was when Jesus spoke these words. Just a few verses before that, if you have your Bible open. Verse 15. There's uh, From verse 15, there's... Uh, 
a quotation from the Old Testament. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan. Now that is a description of a, of a route that you travel, right? That is a, a specific road that you could take if you wanted to go from Egypt through Israel and you wanted to come to Turkey, that would be the road that you would take. Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. Now, what is that darkness? Now, we are accustomed to think of that, dark, of that darkness, first of all, as sin. And that is correct, that is true. But for these people, they would have thought about something different in the first place. You see what happened was in the year 167 before Jesus, 167 years before these words had been spoken, the prophecy of Daniel had been fulfilled. And a Greek general with the name of Antiochus Epiphanes, and that means Antiochus, that's his name, the manifest of God, so someone who claims to be God, came with his soldiers into Jerusalem. They entered the temple. They killed the priests. They went into the Holy of Holies. On the altar, they slaughtered and sacrificed a pig. And you understand what the Jewish people think about, about pork. And they put the statue of Antiochus Epiphanes in the Holy of Holies. And they told the people, pray to him. That was darkness. And for 167 years, up to this day, the experience was that spiritually the country is dead because of what happened. In the meantime, the Roman emperor took over Israel, so there was a new general in place. But it was a terrible time of destruction and of people being killed because the oppression of the Romans was terrible. Along the streets, in one year, they speak about 20,000 crosses where Jewish men had been nailed to the cross so that they can hang until the crows will pick the flesh from their bones as a punishment because they wanted to overthrow the Roman army. Women were raped. Children were killed. And the small group of people who held unto the Lord, they said, we are living in darkness. We are waiting for the day when God will put out his hand, stretch out his hand, and he will touch our land again. The Roman army put a small group of people in charge of the temple in Jerusalem, the Sadducees. They didn't really believe. The Sadducees said, if you die, you are dead. There's nothing more. The Sadducees said, spiritual beings, angels, heaven and God, we don't really believe in that. We are Jews with Jewish culture, but that is all. That was the position of the Sadducees. And they worked with the Roman emperor, and they controlled the temple that Herod had been building. They controlled the sacrifices, and they controlled spiritual life in Jerusalem. So people were crying out, Lord, how long can this go on? How long can our lives be so miserable? How long 
will it take before you take control? And then this word came. A light is shining in the darkness. And that light's name is Jesus. They did not understand at first how he will change everything. But in these verses we get a hint. It includes even the Gentiles. Even people like us who are not Jews. It will include people from every nation and every tribe on earth. Because he is going to build a new kingdom, a new nation. And so in this terrible time, Jesus came and he said, the time is now. Now the world is going to change. I think that when he was nailed to the cross, a lot of people remember that. And they thought, yes, he said that, but now he's dead. But God didn't stop there. Because today, 2,000 years later, we can testify that Jesus is the king. And he truly brought the light. Now that's just the introduction. Let me get to the second point. And that is to what happens. What happens first when God establishes his kingdom? What is the first thing that happens if the king starts to change the world? Verse 18. Still with chapter 4. We've got a long way to go. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. 